Hey, what's up, everyone? It's me, your boy, Ryan Flowers, a.k.a. Clutch Sports Talk, and welcome to another episode of NFL Matchups. As usual, we're going to be talking about what we learned about the previous week. Then we're going to jump right into my Real or Not segment, followed by all of my Week 8 matchups. I'm going to give you guys my previews and predictions on those games, and then close out the show with my fantasy impact. So you guys don't want to miss out, so sit back and relax and enjoy the show. This is NFL Matchups with me, Ryan Flowers. Let's go. We're going to be here all day, baby! I like this kind of party. I like this kind of party, baby. Welcome back to the episode. If you guys haven't already subscribed to the Grid Network YouTube channel, please do so. If you guys want everything and anything on NFL matchups, it'll be listed right there for you guys. All right. Let's move on. Let's talk about what we learned this past week, but we're going to break down games between two teams. Obviously, the first matchup takes us to Sunday night football between the Steelers and the Jets. Now, there was a lot of controversy going into this game earlier in the week with Mike Tomlin making the decision to move on to Russell Wilson uh, and start him over Justin Fields, who's led them to their winning record thus far. Now, a lot of scrutiny was thrown at Mike Tomlin, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, It did not look good early. It was a very rocky start for Russell Wilson early on. I believe the first two series were like unforgettable, right? But overall, they managed to to score 37 points on what we considered one of the more elite defenses, which we'll talk about the Jets here in just a minute. But Russell Wilson finished the game, I believe, what, 264 yards on 29 attempts. Um, But the biggest thing I thought, and this is where I felt like Mike Tomlin really did a good job was, this, the relationship between Russell Wilson and George Pickens. We all knew or have known George Pickens is a pretty good wide receiver. Now, not to say that he 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 became he was he, he sucked uh when when Justin Fields kind of took over the reins there, but Russell Wilson and Justin Fields are two types of, of quarterbacks. Justin Fields is more of a, in my opinion, a one-read quarterback. He's if it's not there, he's running, right? Where Russell Wilson is more comfortable and and, and in the pocket. And I think that's why Mike Tomlin made the switch. I think he knew that down the stretch, although Justin Fields is the more athletic, he's younger, probably cheaper right at this point, he knows if he has any chance of winning uh, and making a a deep run into the playoffs, he's going to have to have a quarterback that can sit there and make throws. And that's exactly what we saw from Russell Wilson as he started to settle in, right? Um, Listen, the Steelers now, if this keeps up, are are legitimate. I, I think so. They're, you know their defense is going to be good. And you know they have offensive talent. Now, the offensive line, still still uh, questionable, but I think it's better, right, in, 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 in other weeks than it's been before. The running game maybe started to get going with Najee Harris. I believe he rushed for over 100 yards, if I'm not mistaken, and a touchdown. Uh, so I really, really feel that the Steelers are, are in a point right now where they got good coaching. The team is buying into what's happening there. And you can tell, like, like – If you're Justin Fields, I understand, man. He's looking at it as well. Well, you know, I've done all I can do to get us to this point. Like, why are you punishing me? But I think overall, this is the better play uh, for this season. Now, for the future, maybe you go back to Justin Fields because how much more does Russell Wilson have left in the tank? That remains to be uh, to be seen. But if him and George Pickens can continue to connect, start spreading the ball off, even to their tight end and Fryermuth, uh, this offense is going to be very potent. This is the offense that I think that a lot of people have been waiting to see from the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, because they finally have a, a quarterback back there that can throw the football. Listen, look, they've suffered the last couple of years with Mason Rudolph and, and a list of other guys that they tried to start. Kenny Pickett. Right. Justin Fields comes in. He's a little different. Like I said, he's more athletic. He's a running quarterback versus a passing quarterback, a pure passer quarterback. Um, whereas Russell Wilson is is more mobile. He maybe isn't as mobile as he once was before, but definitely uh, can still move around the pocket a little bit more agile uh, than other guys that they've had previously up until Justin Fields took the job earlier this season. So uh, I think the Steelers, they're, they're a team you want to buy some stock in now. For sure, especially if Russell Wilson continues continues to play the way he's playing, uh, and and if they're, if Sunday night was just uh, the beginning of it, I, I think they've only begun to scratch the surface. So uh, now looking at the other team, a, a team that's unlike unlike the Steelers, uh, they are dysfunctional. Uh, Steelers are not dysfunctional, but the Jets are very 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 underwhelming performance for for Aaron Rodgers yet again. Um, 
what? I, I I don't even know what to say. Like, you know, the big news was they got Devontae Adams. They traded for him. Now, I get it. It's his first game in a Jets uniform. I, you know, you shouldn't expect too much. I believe he finished the game with like 20, 20 yards or 30 yards, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he failed to make any significant impact within the game whatsoever. And the offense continues to struggle. I, I don't know why they don't run the football. Uh, well, I, I know why. I know why they don't run the football because Aaron Rodgers is there, right? He is the de facto offensive coordinator now, um, and, and they're not running the football the way they need to. Uh, people are watching these games. And you're like, you got Brees Hall. You got Braylon Allen. Like, run the football. I, I, is it a matter of they can't run the football or they just don't want to run the football? Um, and another thing, the Jets defense. Like, what happened to this defense? Uh, you know, They started the game pretty hot, right? They, I be, believe they went up on the, on the Steelers rather quickly. And then the defense just kind of just gave up at the end of the day, right? They made Russell Wilson look like he was Russell Wilson back in the days when he was contending for Super Bowls back in Seattle. Uh, and then you, you look at the special teams issues, you know, missed field goals. I believe there was a, a, a block extra point or something like that. Uh, overall, this team is not buttoned up at all, at all. Um, and, and they had the new head coach, the interim head coach, and Jeff Ulbrich, he he's he has a lot to, to, to do and fix with this organization. At the end of the day, I feel like – it's not going to work out for them. And, and I I thought they had a chance to maybe make the playoffs, but I, I don't know, man. The, 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 every week they continue to be dysfunctional and not play complimentary football. Uh, it's either the offense ain't great or the defense isn't great, or you got the special teams and you got all of them together. And this was a game where none of them were great. And, and Aaron Rodgers has thrown another, in, like look, six interceptions in three games or something crazy like that, some stat line like that. I don't think Devontae Adams was the, the fix it for this problem because Aaron Rodgers is not the same Aaron Rodgers. And, and you Jets fans, maybe some of you are waking up and you're realizing like, you know what? He isn't. Um, and, and I think we're living off of his name a lot more. It's like when you go to a restaurant that's been popular for years and then you go there and they're like, oh, the food's not even that great. But why did you go? Or why is this res restaurant even relevant? It's because of the name. Right. And Aaron Rodgers, I believe, is that kind of guy. His, you hear his name. You're like, oh, my God, it's Aaron Rodgers. But honestly, he's not playing any better or doing any better than what Zach Wilson was doing last year for the Jets. And that's just a fact. So uh, a very underwhelming performance for this Jets team. It doesn't get any, any easier for them because the Bills are continuing to win. And they made a smart pickup by getting Amari Cooper. That's going to help make their offense even better uh, with Josh Hallen throwing him the football. So, uh, but again, it comes back to the organizational structure uh, and the Jets literally sold their soul to, to Aaron Rodgers to, to possibly make a run at a Super Bowl. But hell, they'll be lucky to even make the playoffs at this point. All right, moving on. Let's talk about what we learned uh, between the Packers and the Texans. Now, this was a very highly uh, acclaimed game going into this game. Obviously, Packers and Texans, both teams are vying to be one of the best teams in their respective conferences, even in the National Football League as well. So uh, I knew this game was going to be competitive, and it came down to the very last play, honestly, uh, the Packers getting the win over the Texans. Now, let's take a look at the Packers side of things and what we learned. I, I think they're continuing to continue to struggle on offense. Uh, two first half interceptions uh, by Jordan Love kind of kept the Texans in the game. If you really think about it, Jordan Love outplayed CJ Stroud tremendously. I think we believe CJ Stroud only threw for like 80 something yards. Uh, Jordan Love did pick it up in the second half and let his team down to get that go ahead uh, field goal to win the game ultimately. Um, but one thing I will say about the Packers is though, and, and you kind of saw it a couple weeks ago with the Minnesota game. I know they lost that game. Um, and you've seen it throughout the rest of the, the, the other games that they played. They show tremendous resiliency um despite their offensive inefficiencies and sometimes even on the defensive side of things they hang around they hang around and that's the mark of a good team right um is that they just don't fold like the cowboys right you know the cowboys are down three points if you're a cowboys fan you're like well that's game right but when you look at other teams you're like oh that, that's nothing when you look at the chiefs you're like oh 14 points in the Super Bowl, we're down that, ah, it might as well be a point. It might as well be tied, right? And you look at the Packers, they are very resilient uh, in that regard, especially against another playoff caliber type team. So that's one thing I really love seeing about them. And then Jordan Love, although he did have those early mistakes in the game, um, he, he was able to turn it around. And what I also love about him is that he distributes the ball evenly to a bunch of receivers. Whoever's open, whoever has the hot hand, he knows how to get the ball to him. And, and, and let's be real. I don't think a lot of people thought Jordan Love was going to be as good as he is today. 
right? They just thought, oh, a kid out of Utah State, eh, he sat behind Aaron Rodgers for so long. He's one of the very few guys, in my opinion, that sits behind and waits to, for his turn to come out and just be a complete stud. Jordan Love is the real deal. There's no doubt about that. And you can dispute me in the comment section if you want to. But the facts do not lie. The guy is a stud. And he's he's legit. He's legit. And the Packers are legitimate Super Bowl contenders in a very contested NFC North division, right? There's a there's a possibility. And we'll talk about this later. There's a possibility that the, all three teams or four teams in this division could make the plus at a minimum three, right? And and they're right there, right? And, you know, they, they got to compete against the Lions though, or they got to play against Minnesota again, right? They still got to go up against the Bears, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, um, but, but one thing for me that really stood out for me is that they have the heart of a champion, um, although they haven't won any championships yet recently, but they've shown and proven to me that they can they can make a couple of mistakes, but they can bounce back and be efficient uh, to get these wins, which you're going to need, especially in the playoffs, right? It's not going to be clean all the way. Uh, that's one thing I like about the Packers. Now, on the other side of things, the Houston Texans, um, they, they're they having a hard time protecting C.J. Stroud. I believe he's been sacked 22 times already this year, and, 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 and I could be wrong, right? Just fact check me on that. At least four times this past weekend against the Packers, and I think that's causing him – to, 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 to not be effective, or at least not in this particular game. And of course, you don't have Nico Collins, one of the best wide receivers thus far this season, that does put put a put a crimp in your in your game plan there. Now, other guys need to step up, like Tank Dell, like where were you? Stephon Diggs, you know, uh, you know, he's still a, a prominent receiver. Uh, you know, but Joe Mixon did his thing. I will say that. When when Joe Mixon is in the lineup for this team, look out. Look out, because I believe he. He is a catalyst for them. And, and, and without him, they'd be dead in the water, personally. I, I, I really believe so. So if you look out for the Texans, you just got to make sure that you keep C.J. Stroud upright and defensively, still giving up big plays in the secondary. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got to find ways to shore up these things. Um, and I will say this, they are a resilient type of team too, as well. So th they're almost built similar to the Packers as well. Uh, really young quarterbacks. Uh, teams that are very resilient as well. Uh, they do make mistakes. They do make mistakes. So, uh, but I think they learn from those mistakes. And I think they'll bounce back. I, you know, it, no loss is good. No loss is good. But I think a loss like this, close a game that you probably probably should have won in the end. Really, um, they 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 couldn't convert uh, late in that game to kind of keep the drive going to to limit. Uh, and minimize the time the Packers had. They, 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 they couldn't do what they needed to do, uh, and therefore they lost the game. But I think they've proven to me that they can do that in other types of games too. So I, I'm not, you know, this is their second loss of the season. Uh, they're 0-2 against the NFC North. I still think they're the best team in their division as well, one of the better teams in the AFC outside of the, the Baltimore Ravens. I really feel like they can really do some damage. So not too concerned with them. Um, but I, I, one thing I did learn about them really is that they need to protect seats to protect CJ Stroud and make sure he's upright. And then they definitely got to get Nico Collins back in the lineup as well. Okay. My favorite segment of NFL matchups, we're going to do a little bit of real or nah, where basically I'll present a question and I'm going to let you know if it's real or not. Nah. So first up, let's talk about the NFC North. Now the question is real or not, nah, the NFC North will get three teams in the playoffs this season. So let's talk about this. Let's look at this division overall. You got four teams, all of which are above 500. Two of them five and one, one of them five and two, and the Bears, who are last technically, or not last, I guess they are considered last, are four and two who were sitting on a bye week last week, right? And they're starting to turn things around. This is the best division in football, I, I, I think, right now, by far. Uh, at least in the NFC. You look at the other divisions in this uh in the, in the NFC conference, the South, trash. NFC West, um, on the verge of being trash, I would say. The Niners ain't really helping themselves make the case now they're 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 in a matchup with the arizona cardinals too uh but the nfc north man listen i believe that if the playoffs started today the bears would be sitting at a number seven seed if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong right uh but when you look at the potential of all these teams not only are they the best division the three teams in the, in in this one division arguably are one of the best teams in the national football league and that's the that's the detroit lions <laughs> right who who squeaked by minnesota mind you Squeak by them. So Minnesota could have won that game and been like, well, we're still undefeated. We're the best team in the NFL with the Chiefs at this point, right? So, 
you know, and you look at the grand scheme of things, the NFC East ain't that great either, other than the uh, the Washington Commanders. The man, the Philly is trying to get back in the race. But do we really believe that the Washington Commanders can make a case to beat any of these teams in the NFC North or even Philly? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So the disparity amongst the divisions uh, in the NFC is, is a pretty wide gap. What, like I said before, all teams are above 500. And the Bears are playing much better. And we know the rest about the other teams, Packers, Lions, and, 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 and Vikings. So real or not, will the NFC get three playoff, or excuse me, NFC North get three playoff teams? Absolutely. That's a real. All right, moving on in my next real or not, will the Chiefs not win a Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes continuing to turn over the football? Let's talk about this. Um, well, let's break it down, I guess. They're 6-0. Right, they're six and zero despite his underwhelming performance. Like, let's just look at some stats. I got it in front of me here right now. He's averaging two hundred and thirty-one yards per game. He's only thrown six touchdowns, but eight interceptions, and on a pass rating of eighty-two point five. Now, not to mention, you throw this on as well. They lost Rasheed Rice, their best receiver for the year. Right, Isaiah Pacheco still on the IR. We'll come back in the next couple of weeks, or they gotta you know get him back acclimated. Um, Left tackle is still a position of weakness for this particular team. Um, and Xavier Worthy is not, like I said before earlier, to me, he hasn't really been proven to be a true number one wide receiver, although he's extremely fast, right? So you factor that all in, right? You, you look at Patrick Mahomes' turnover rate, um, but really at the end of the day, defensively, they're so strong that th despite the turnovers, they're keeping him in the game. Uh, and they're able to win these games. Now, are they going to lose a game this season? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, and do I think Patrick Mahomes is going to continue this trend of turnovers and, and, and poor play? I don't think so. And I don't think so. So with that being said, real or not, uh, the Chiefs won't win a Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes turning over the football. I'm going to say, nah, because he's going to, 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 to play better uh, and, and improve his play and get this team to where they need to go. In my final real or nah, are the Patriots the worst team in the National Football League? Let's talk about it. Uh, right now, their current performance is not great. I believe they've dropped, what, six games in a row after winning that, that astonishing game first week of the season against the Bengals on the road. Um, to point out defensively, which I thought this was going to be their, their strong suit, they're not really that good on defense. Uh, they're giving up 36.5 points per game. Uh, they're struggling to stop the run uh giving up about five and a half yards per carry against offenses so that's that's not going to be a recipe for success and offensively uh they struggled they struggled um only averaging 14 points a game uh you know and a lot of it is because Jacoby Brissett was the starter the last you know majority of the season now Drake May which is a bright spot now he's come in uh and has played pretty solid even for a rookie with a team with really no talent not a great offensive line um and I think that's their only bright spot Right. So so to say, are they the worst team in the National Football League? I'm going to say nah. Right. Because have you heard of the Carolina Panthers? <laughs> so, again, to answer that real to answer that question, are the Patriots the worst team in the National Football League? That's a resounding nah, because I feel like the Carolina Panthers are still the worst team in the National Football League. The one thing that the Patriots can say that the Panthers can't is that they do have their 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 future with a quarterback uh, at the at the helm there uh, with, with Drake May. They have their, their their future quarterback there, which the Carolina Panthers do not help. We don't even know if Bryce Young will even be uh, in a Panthers jerseys next year and what Dave Canales is going to do next year with them. So, no, that's going to be a nah. The Patriots are not the worst team in the National Football League. Okay, let's get into our Week 8 preview and predictions here on NFL matchups. Is We're going to start off on Thursday night. you got the Minnesota Vikings traveling to LA to and SoFi Stadium to take on the LA Rams. Uh Vikings coming off of a, a heartbreaking loss this past weekend against Detroit. Uh a game in, in which they probably felt they probably should have won. They, they 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 narrowly almost got out of there with with the win, but the Lions ended up winning that game on a late field goal uh to seal that deal there uh and stay on top of the NFC North. But nonetheless, they travel short week to uh, LA to take on the Rams. The Rams are struggling right now. Um, there are a couple couple of rumors going on right now. Obviously, the biggest one for them is that they are in the market for possibly trading Cooper Cup uh, for at least a minimum of a second rounder. Um, I, I think he should be a go for this particular game. But when you look at the stats and draw these, uh, draw the curtains back on these teams, I mean, the the most glaring thing for me uh, is is the offensive 
I guess, output for Minnesota. Now, Minnesota's defense has been good, right? Or at least that's what we think. According to PFF, they're only ranked 21st, where the Rams' defense is ranked 26. Um, but offensively, the Vikings are ranked 13th, uh, and the uh, Rams are ranked 21st. But both really, really strong quarterbacks. Obviously, Sam Darnold started off the year uh, on fire. Cooled off a little bit, a little, just a little bit, I would say. Um, right now, PFF does have Sam Darnold at the higher grade at a 68.8 over Matthew Stafford at 56.5. Uh, but, you know, you can't put nothing past Matthew Stafford. Although the Rams do, do not have a winning record, I still think that they're a formidable team. Um, and I think they'll have the home crowd uh, on their side on a short week. They don't have to travel. Minnesota has to come into the Western time zone. With that said, I think the game will be close to a certain extent, but in the end, which we find out with a lot of these Rams games, especially when they play uh, really, really good teams, they just don't have enough horses and the, uh, the the game of attrition just seems to wear them out. So for me, I'm, I'm going to go with the Vikings in this one. I, I really believe that uh, they'll, they'll get over uh, that loss last week against the Detroit Lions and, and move forward and try to get this win here on Thursday night to start the week off here in week eight. All right, we got battle of the AFC North here. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, very convincing wing, excuse me, win over Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, last Monday night. Cleveland Browns, obviously Deshaun Watson out for the year. Is it James Winston? Is it DTR? Who's going to get the start? Um, who knows, right? But let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens offensively. One of the best teams, if not the best team right now in football. Uh, I think they found their identity with running the ball. And I keep saying that every week and I, and I keep saying, yeah. And every time I say that, they, they find another way, right? I will say this, though, about Lamar Jackson. I think he finally accepts or understands his role as a very elusive mobile quarterback. Um, is he going to be a traditional pocket passer like, like Jordan Love, how Jordan Love looks out there, or to an extent, uh, C.J. Stroud, some of these younger quarterbacks out there? Absolutely not. But the combination between him and Derrick Henry, who honestly has been probably the biggest free agent signing uh, this year. I know I talked about this a couple weeks ago on my NFL Sunday Wake Up Show as far as free agency pickups uh, in this past offseason, Derrick Henry has to be uh, the number one at the top of that list. Uh, you know, a lot of questions, in, inclu including for myself, about his age. Will he be able to stay healthy? Now, knock on wood, he's, he continues to stay healthy. Uh, I don't see them going into Cleveland and losing this guy. I think this game is in Cleveland, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it is. It's 10 o'clock kickoff in uh, Cleveland. The, the, the Browns are done. They're, 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 they're pretty much uh, <laughs> stick a fork in them, right? So, uh, rankings i don't even want to get into it honestly i mean what i can say is that the ravens are a top 10 and literally uh at least at least in more crucial statistical uh defensive and offensive rankings right so whereas the browns you can imagine are not so for me although it is an afc north game the two teams do know each other well it's just too many injuries too many unknowns for the cleveland browns one thing we know baltimore is ready to go and after dropping their first two They've won, what, four or five in a row, and I look, they're looking to extend their winning streak. So uh, in this one, I'm going to go with the uh, Baltimore Ravens to win this one uh, rather comfortably, I would say. All right, let's talk about the Tennessee Titans. They're one and five. They're on the road heading to the Motor City to take on the Detroit Lions, who sit uh, nice and pretty there at five and one. Um, you know, they made Titans made a change of quarterback last week, Mason Rudolph. I uh, got the start now. Apparently, you know, Will Levis had some type of injury, which I did not know anything about. But I think they're just sick of Will Levis at this point. Kind of like the Browns, the quarterback play kind of sucks too. Uh, this is not a good football team. Period. On paper, uh, the the lines are just far more superior. Uh, the only thing I will say is that Titans have maybe had a little harder schedule, uh, but it doesn't matter because their 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 record really is should be one in five anyway. Honestly, whereas the Lions probably biggest games were last week uh i know they had a game against tampa um and forgive me if i'm I, 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 there might be some other games that they've had this week that are this year that have been really good um you know uh, was i think they opened up with the lions too or was it something like that i forgot so i mean excuse me they opened up with the chiefs so i'm just looking back at their schedule right now but nonetheless this team is one of the top teams in the in the national football league yet alone uh the nfc jared goff is playing really really well um you know not turning the ball over is is key that that's that's like usually 70 percent of the whole thing right there as far as playing quarterback in the national football league if you don't turn the football over you give your, your, your team a chance to win these games uh and that's what the lions have been able to do and i think they'll continue to do that this week against the uh lowly tennessee titans all right let's 
focus our attention to the uh, AFC South. Uh, both teams kind of, this could be one of those directional games, I would say. Um, this is a rematch, I believe, week one, <clears throat> uh, where the Colts were at home. They played host to the Texans, and they lost a close one uh, to, to to the Texans. Uh, but now Texans are at home. They're sitting at 5-2, and two, coming off of a loss in Green Bay last week. The Colts coming off of a win uh, against Miami in a tough-fought game. Anthony Richardson just does return to the starting lineup. He is still the starting quarterback, which to me is a mistake, but I get it from an organizational standpoint. The Colts have to start Anthony Richardson. They invested a high draft pick in him. They got to see, they got to kick the tires on him, right? CJ Stroud coming off of a, a performance he would rather soon forget. Uh 80s, 82 yards or something like that throwing, which is which is crazy to me. I I, I didn't even think an NFL quarterback of his caliber could even produce a, uh, such a stat line like that. Uh, but the, the, these two teams do play each other very closely. We saw that in the first matchup, um, but I, I think the Titans have a really good shot here uh, to, to get back on, not the Titans, I'm sorry, the Texans, excuse me, um, get 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 a chance to get back on track here. The Colts, to me, aren't a really offensive, um, efficient unit, especially with Anthony Richardson. I think they're far better with Joe Flacco under the start, and PFF believes that as well, too. Um, listen, the Colts are ranked 29th overall offensively, whereas the, the Texans are ranked ninth, uh, where I think Joe Flacco provides a little bit more better quarterback heel play than Anthony Richardson, who's probably good for a big chunk play here or there, maybe a, a scramble, but that's not enough to be um, sustainable in National Football League. So I like the Texans in this one to win the game. Uh, I would say comfortably, but um, I don't know what the spread is on this game, but I, I, I would definitely say that they, this is a game that they should win. Uh, it says minus six here. Uh, so almost by a touchdown, I think that's about right for this particular game. All right, we got the Green Bay Packers heading down to Duval County to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the Packers, great win, big win for them last week against the Texans at home. Now they take the show on the road. Jordan Love looking to just continue to improve, uh, not make so many mistakes early on in these games, um, you know, because eventually, you know, you keep making these mistakes against really good teams. You you can't dig your way out of that. So I, I think, you know, for them, that's something they got to focus on. And I talked about that early on. As far as Jacksonville is concerned, uh, a great win. Uh, they played two weeks in, in London. They lost one, won one. Um, you know, maybe they can ride that wave against the Patriots, bring it back home. Uh, I think I think they'll be in this game a little early. Because one thing about Green Bay is that they do start very slow, but then when they get hot, they get hot. Uh, statistically, the the Packers are are just a better team, uh, at, at least you know in, in my opinion. Obviously, the, the stats don't really show that. Uh, when you look at PFF, their defensive rankings are 16th and 17th respectively. The Packers 16th, Jacksonville 17th. Offensively, the Packers are at 11th, and the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars are 14th. So, and strength of schedule really isn't that uh, a big of a factor either because the Packers according to PFF, haven't really played anybody. They have one of the, the lowest uh, or the highest, I don't know, it's how you look at it, but they're ranked 28th. So basically they ain't played nobody yet, according to PFF. And the same thing for Jacksonville. So um, I think on paper, we all are looking at Green Bay at this game, including myself, right? But something about going to Florida sometimes uh, in that, that hot, muggy weather environment. Now, I, I think what, what goes against Jacksonville right now is that they were two weeks in London. They got to come back, not even a bye. Uh, they may be a little bit tired and a little bit more fatigued. So I'm going to take Green Bay to win a close one. I don't think this game will be a blowout. Uh, the current spread on this particular game, uh, let me look that up for you guys. I believe it's it's four, four and a half right now, uh, but I can see that number dropping. Maybe it's about three and a half right before game time, uh, just because I feel like it's going to be closer than what we think. Trevor Lawrence has been playing a little bit better, uh, at least last week he did. Uh, their running game has got on track with Tank Bigsby. Uh, I don't know what the status of Travis Etienne is. Uh, you know, I don't think he's injured. I just don't think that the Jaguars believe in him, and he may be on the trade block uh, sooner uh, rather than later. So, all right, we got the Arizona Cardinals. Um, this is also a 10 a.m. start. A kind of a weird one for the Arizona Cardinals. I, I think it's always hard when you have the, the the Pacific Standard Time Zone teams heading to the Eastern Standard Standard Time. Uh, so this is a 10 o'clock start. So for these Cardinals players, their body is going to feel like it's 7 a.m. And you know they're going to have to obviously get there earlier to the stadium before that. So their clock might be running a little bit behind. Cardinals coming off a really, really uh, big win this Monday night on the doubleheader against the L.A. Chargers. Uh, but Tua, Tua may be back in the saddle for Miami. Uh, so that's that's a big thing right now. Um, no official word about Tua yet, but 
Reports are saying that he there's a good chance he may start. And if that's the case, good for them because then their offense can maybe get back on track because this offense has been atrocious. Now, this past week um, against the, uh, who, who they played this way, I believe it was because they tried to get the running game back online. Uh, it was a close loss, 21-13 to the Colts. Again, they probably felt they probably should have won. Um, right now, I can't I can't really go off the stats for the Dolphins because it's a little bit skewed because they haven't really had great quarterback play. Now, as far as the Cardinals are concerned, um, defensively, they can be had. They can be had. I felt like in that Monday night game, the Chargers, if they have had one type of game-breaking type of wide receiver play, they probably would have won that game. A more explosive plays like Lad McConkey can only do so much. Uh, their tight end Disley, who saw a lot of targets, he kind of start eating up that, that that Arizona Cardinals defense late in that game. But they just don't have that one stud. Uh, and J.K. Dobbins, you know, he was okay, uh, but not good enough, right? So, you know. Kyler Murray is good for running around, making plays off script. Uh, so, but you know, for some reason, man, I, 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 I'll say this: I feel like if 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 Tua starts, and I get it, he's been out a while. If he does start, I'm going to go out and limb. I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins to win this game. I think if Tua does start emotionally, that team is going to be feeling a lot better. Uh, I think the the whole traveling to the East Coast. Is a bit of a struggle, especially for Arizona. And historically, they have not fared well uh, traveling from west to east um, um, to play in this particular time slot. So I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to go with Tua as the quarterback, assuming he is the quarterback right now. They haven't, like, again, they haven't made an official word, uh, but I'm going to go with the Dolphins to win that game there at home in front of the Miami Dolphins fans. All right, we got AFC East matchup. The struggling Jets taking on uh, the struggling Patriots as well. Uh, the Jets, excuse me, coming off of a pretty sad loss on Sunday night to, to the Steelers. Um, and then the Patriots, uh, underwhelming performance in London too. They don't get a bye week, so they're traveling back. The good thing for them is that they're at home. The Jets have to travel to them. Uh, statistically speaking, both teams aren't really good. Uh, the one thing that we thought the Jets were going to be good at is defense, but apparently they're they, they're uh, they they've struggled a little bit. Um, now PFF does have them ranked as the first defense. I I, I don't understand that. Um, but but if you watch the games, they can be had. Honestly, they just gave up thirty something points this past week to Russell Wilson. Um, but there are pieces there. Uh, I, there's no doubt about it, right? You get they're, they're going to get Hassan Reddick. We're going to see if he plays this game. How well he's been keeping in conditioning uh, since holding out. And but offensively, this is where the team really needs to improve upon. Aaron Rodgers, I believe, has thrown multiple picks in the last three games, and that's not good. Uh, like they they brought on Devontae Adams to maybe help shore up that offense. They've taken the responsibility from play calling from Nathaniel Hackett, uh, and they only managed to put up, I believe, what 17 points last week, which isn't good enough. Uh, so for them, the, the only thing good about it is that the Patriots defense is really bad, um, and they don't have enough weapons in 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 in, in in their arsenal to compete. Uh, so on paper, I like, I like the jets of this one. This is a game you have to win. Now these two teams have met previously earlier this year and the jets did win that game pretty convincingly. It was actually probably one of their better offensive output uh, against new England. I believe it was a Monday night game. So I would expect that to be the same again. Now the pages may be a little bit more, uh, what's the invigorated, uh, after hearing their coach calling them soft. So I, I would expect a bit, a bit of a fight, but overall, in the end, I think that the uh, New England Patriots will fall short of, of competing with the Jets. So I'm going to take the Jets in this game in the AFC East. All right, we got a battle of the NFC South Falcons taking on the Buccaneers. Both teams coming off of pretty lackluster performances offensively. Um, the Falcons could not get anything going against Seattle last week, like literally. Uh, B. John Robinson, I, I believe he did score, but it just, you know, Tyler Algier was a non factor. Um, they just really couldn't get anything going. Now you look at Tampa Bay, they got up quick on the, on the Ravens Monday night. But after that, I believe the Ravens just kind of went on a tear and scored like 20 something points unanswered. Uh, Baker Mayfield struggled uh, a couple I believe multiple interceptions and they're going to be out without Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin, I think for the rest of the season, if I'm not mistaken, and Mike Evans uh, up until I believe week 12. Uh, so it doesn't look good for them. Now these two teams did play recently. Uh, the Falcons got the overtime win uh, on a very questionable or, or, or non-questionable call uh, from the referees, allowing that game to kind of go a little bit further and, and, and helping out the Falcons winning that game in overtime. Uh, but Kirk, I'll tell you this. I think Kirk Cousins, this was the first week in a while that we haven't seen him really live up 
to what he's been playing or how he's been playing. In the end, the Falcons are just a little bit more healthier uh, than Tampa Bay Buccaneers at this point. So I'm going to take the Falcons uh, to get the season sweep. Although this game is in Tampa Bay, I just don't think they have enough in the tank. They don't have anyone um, out there that they can really put out there to compete against uh, the Dirty Birds in the uh, Atlanta Falcons. So this is an interesting game here. We got the Eagles taking on the Bengals. Uh, Bengals are looking to surge back to get back in the playoff picture here, and a win here would definitely help that for them. Uh, they're sitting at four and excuse me, three and four, where the Eagles, on the other hand, are, are four and two. Now they've 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 bounced back after the week before. Uh, they played uh, who was it? The Browns only won by four. Nick Sirianni is gesturing to the fans. Uh, they go on the road into MetLife. The return of Saquon Barkley, and he just goes off, destroys the, the the Giants' defense, rushes for 176 yards, something crazy like that. Uh, and, and then so yeah, there it is. So I, I still think this team is middle of the road. Quarterback play isn't the greatest right now. Jalen Hurts is is ranked at 64.4 uh, as far as his grade for PFF, where Joe Burrow is getting better and better each and every week. Uh, and the good thing for them is they're at home. They're at home. So uh, as far as key injuries are concerned, this one this one might be a problem, especially for the Eagles. Uh, Jordan Mailata is out. Uh, he's on the IR for now, and he was one of the fourth or best uh, tackles ranked. All right, so that's a big thing. Now, obviously, they were able to get past it this week, but the Bengals do have a pretty formidable pass rush, uh, so I would expect that to be a problem, uh, especially getting in the face of Jalen Hurts, who has been known to have a, a case of the turnover bug uh, this season. So I believe he leads the league in most turnovers as, at the quarterback position. Uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but there it is now. Now, the line on this game is really close. It's minus two and a half, uh, so it's letting you know that they're that, – it can go either way. I would be surprised if this doesn't drop to about minus one and a half, maybe even a pick them, depending on where you place your bets at. Uh, but overall, with all that said, I do like the Bengals to win this game um, because I don't know what what team you're going to get with Philadelphia from a week to week basis. All right, one week offensively they look they look stagnant. Then next week they come and look better. Why? Because they're able to run the ball. I think for them they just need to get the ball to Saquon Barkley. And, and, and let everything else play out from there. Uh, th that'd be my best advice to them. Uh, but the Bengals, honestly, man, I think they, they, they're they're really going on a good little tear after starting off pretty rough here. Um, but they got this with they got this game. Uh, then they got the Raiders. Uh, then they got to go on the road to Baltimore and then in LA. So this is a must win for them. I think if they want to get back in the conversation, because if you can win this game, get back to 500, you should beat the Raiders the following week. That puts you at five and four. Um, as you get into the game with the Baltimore Ravens, which which obviously they played them close a couple weeks ago. They lost in overtime. So uh, so they're, they're back in it. They just got to continue on the stretch that they're gone uh, and maybe so. But I'm going to go with the uh, Bengals to win that particular game there. All right, let's take a look at the Saints and the Chargers. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, boy, I, I don't even know where to start with the Saints. Um, uh, don't know what the status is for uh, Derek Carr. Um, I know he was suffering an oblique injury, which put Spencer Rattler in the starting lineup on Thursday night, or was it Monday or Thursday night? Or forgive me if I, Thursday night last week, where he just got steamrolled. Um, not all his fault. I, I don't think they played really well. I think Denver was just ready to go, honestly, if you ask me. Um, overall, this team is not. They 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 they, they kind of made us including myself look like a fool i was on board with the saints i thought they were going to do something but when i thought about it i was like well first two weeks they played carolina and dallas right and and dallas all we know now their defense is not really great and we already knew that the panthers um weren't a great team anyway uh so defensively they're trying to hang in there um it, it, it's 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 not a highly ranked defense which i thought they'd be better but honestly some injuries there have plagued them uh, they're just a middle of the road team overall, uh, and I feel that their 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 head coach is a lame duck coach. Now their strength of schedule has been tough for them so far, um, and it's only going to get worse if I'm not mistaken. I mean, listen, they got the Chargers that well they can get healthy again against Carolina. They do have the Falcons, the Browns, uh, the Rams. So there they are some winnable games there, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough for them. And then when you look at the Chargers, they're coming off of a loss. Uh, on Monday night to the Arizona Cardinals, a game that they probably thought they could win. Uh, they just don't have enough explosive players, which I think they need to go out and do something in the in the uh, in the trade realm right there. So Cooper Cup, hey, if you got a second round pick, maybe make the trade to switch locker rooms there. And so far, adding a guy like Cooper Cup could probably really help boost this team's confidence, but because you already know they're going to be well coached, right? You look at their last couple games here. Um, 
you know, lost to Arizona. They got the Saints. They got the Browns. They got the Titans. Uh, those are all three winnable games right now. They're sitting at uh, what's their record right now? Currently, they're sitting at three and three. So if they can win uh, this game here and maybe win the next two after that, you know, it, it puts you at a really good position at about six and three. And then you end up having to play. Uh, they got the Bengal. Excuse me. Got the Ravens and the Falcons and then the Chiefs. So uh, definitely, if they can get these three wins against these really really lowly teams. That would be a right step in the direction for them as far as playoffs are concerned, uh, because I don't think they're going to compete for the a AFC West anyway. So their best bet is to try to win out uh, and get a wild card or something like that. But uh, overall, I, I do like the Chargers this game. They are at home. I think they're a better coach. I think I still think they have the better personnel. They'll have the better quarterback play. Um, and I think there's there's something to be said about the connection between Herbert and Disley. And of course, like McConkey, I got to throw his name out there, too. So but I like the Chargers uh, to win this game at home <clears throat> and get back in the winning side of the column there. This is probably one of my most interesting games to, to kind of look at Buffalo Bills on the road, taking on Seattle. Like for those of you who, who watch football, right, whether it's college or pro, it's weird going to the Pacific Northwest like. It, the Seahawks don't necessarily have to be really be a great team, but something about going up there is it's just kind of like odd, right? I don't know what it is because I guess it's a, this is a far flight, I would say, because the Bills are coming from upstate New York. They got to fly cross country and in the, in the top western part of the country to play in Seattle, right? But good thing for them, they got Josh Allen, and I think I really believe in my heart of hearts, getting Amari Cooper was crucial for this team. To, to, to remain as one of those top teams in the AFC um, because it's only going to free up a, a lot of other guys. We saw what happened last week. Uh, Mark Cooper, first game as a bill, got a touchdown. What, what, what else happened? Keon Coleman, career day, right? Four, four receptions, 125 yards, right? A lot of people were saying, well, they weren't using him correctly. Why? Because they have him playing outside. He's not that kind of receiver. But guess what? You get a guy like Amari Cooper. One thing I will say about Amari Cooper, very tactical, as, as a route runner, he is a pro, an extreme professional, a tactician when it comes to route running and getting open. And I think that's going to really help out uh, Keon Coleman, line him up in the slot, maybe because he's a big guy, right? Line him up in the slot, maybe work work against some smaller nickel corners. Uh, and that's going to free up some more opportunities for him and some other guys like Khalil Shakir, um, who had a pretty good day in the office, too, on Sunday, too. So, you know, you look at Seattle. I don't know what's the status of uh, a DK Metcalf at this point. Um, you know, he he did he he has a questionable leg injury, so he he may or may not be ready to go, which is a big blow to them. Um, but Seattle, one thing we say we'll say we'll say about Seattle, they will throw the football. They will throw the football and they run. Their their offense is 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 pretty potent. It's pretty potent. The only problem with it is that sometimes they become too pass reliant. Um, and they're gonna have to they're gonna have to feed the ball to Kenneth Walker Jr. at some point. So um, when you look at these guys, uh, metric wise teams, uh, team statistically, uh, you know, offensively they're 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 sixth and fifth. The Bills are sixth, the fifth, uh, and the Seahawks are fifth. Um, but I like Buffalo on the road here. Uh, I, I think this is a, a better team coaching wise. A lot of people may disagree with me. Um, not to say that Seattle isn't coached well, but I, I just don't really buy Seattle. I know they're just coming off a really great win at home, or excuse me, on the road in Atlanta, but let's just be real. The Falcons are an exciting team. A lot of people are putting a lot of stock in them, but they aren't the Buffalo Bills. I think the Bills are an established team. They are what they are. Josh Allen's playing really well. Him and Lamar Jackson, to me, are one of the two front runners. For, for MVP, obviously Lamar is probably the front runner, uh, but Josh Allen is playing really good football and not turning the ball over. So I like the uh, Buffalo Bills to take this one in the Pacific Northwest against the Seattle Seahawks. All right, let's take our attention and focus it on the two young uh, two young quarterbacks here. We got Caleb Williams, hopefully Jaden Daniels. I know he's day-to-day. -day. Uh, he went out, he left that game early. Um, the other day, I believe was it was a rib injury for the commanders. Hopefully he's, he's good to go. But I mean, obviously these are two quarterbacks right now, especially in Jaden Daniels, who has been lighting it up and Caleb Williams is coming off of a bye, but prior to that bye, had been lighting it up himself. Uh, so the bears travel to Washington to take on the commanders. Now I will say this defensively, the bears are better. The bears are just better offensively. 
Washington is better, but the Bears are improving. So it's kind of like one of those, it's a test of will here. Which one is going to break first? Will the Bears defense stifle Washington or will Washington's offense get after the Bears defense? I, I, me personally, although I do like the Bears overall, I, I think Jaden Daniels is is the better quarterback overall right now. I, I think although Caleb Williams is improving, but he's he's had a short uh, a short stint here where he has played really well. Where I feel like Jaden Daniels, with the exception of maybe the first game against the Buccaneers, ever since then he's really been lights out. Now the injury is a little bit of a concern for me, but if it's just a rib and you know they've been able to treat it this week constantly, and he'll be you know maybe he won't be a hundred percent, but if he's 90 percent, that's damn near good as a hundred percent in the National Football League. So I like the Commanders to take this win, uh, although the Bears did have a whole week to prepare and get ready to go, whereas Washington uh, did it. But the good thing for Washington is that, that their game against the Panthers was over literally in the first quarter. So I would assume that Dan Quinn rested a lot of guys or they didn't have to do a lot uh, to, to get that win and, and produce more film for the Bears to prepare for. So, um, But I like the Washington Commanders to win that game. I think it's going to be an exciting game. Two young quarterbacks going at it um, in the afternoon. It doesn't get much better than that, I would say. All right. Um, in a snoozer here. You got the lowly Pit, uh, Pittsburgh, but the Carolina Panthers taking on the Broncos, who are four and three and looking to trend upwards, whereas the Panthers are, uh, well, I'll say this. They're one and six. The season's pretty much a wrap for them. Um, they're, they need to be in a quarterback uh, mindset for the draft, uh, whether it's Shador, um, Cam Ward, uh, who else is out there? Somebody. But but Brush Young isn't the guy. Uh, Andy Dalton, obviously, we knew he wasn't the guy. I think he was just somebody they needed to, to put in because Bryce Young would get killed um, if he continued. And, and, you know, but they still haven't played really well, honestly. So uh, they're dead last overall. Uh, defensively, they suck. Offensively, not really good. Um, Denver, Denver's offense is improving. We all know about their defensive exploits. They get after it. They, they get takeaways. Bo Nix is steadily playing better um, with each and every game. Hopefully, you know, Sean Payton can dial up some more play action for him. Javante Williams really, really popped this past Thursday night against the Saints. If he can continue that trend, that'll be awesome, uh, which I think he will because, uh, you know, the Panthers cannot stop the run. Their best run defensor, defender it was has been out for the, for the, for the season. Uh, and so teams have had a field day on their running game uh, with their running attack. So I like the Buffalo, excuse me, I like the Denver Broncos to win this game pretty easily. Pretty easily, and if, if they struggle with them, then I don't know. I I I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I really don't. All right, we got the uh, under the only undefeated team here, the Kansas City Chiefs, taking on the Las Vegas Raiders in Allegiant Stadium here in my home city of Las Vegas. Uh, the Chiefs are undefeated, like I said before. The Raiders are two and five. Raiders coming off of a, another loss in LA. Uh, it's their second time playing in L.A. They played the Chargers earlier in the year. Uh, they lost that one. They went back, played the Rams, and they lost that game too. Now, Gardner Minshew is going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, Aiden O'Connell is on the injured reserve, the fractured, I believe, it, throwing hand. Um, and they, the Raiders did go ahead and side Desmond Ritter off the practice squad of the Arizona Cardinals, which, I, you know, it is what it is. Like, you better hope he doesn't see any time because he sucks too. Uh, with Gardner Minshew, you already know what you're going to get, honestly. Um, he's going to turn the ball over at least once or twice. And the Chiefs defense is no joke. They are, this is, I, like I mentioned before, they are the glue of what's holding this team together. Patrick Mahomes should get a little bit better, uh, better support today, or excuse me, on, on Sunday, or not support, but he should play better just because the Raiders defense ain't good either. So, which which is sad because I thought the defense for the Raiders had potential. Uh, they got some guys on there, at least the front seven, Max Crosby, but Tyree Wilson, their, their draft pick from a year ago, he really, I don't even know if the guy plays anymore, to be honest with you. I, I've yet to really see him on the field make any type of play. So, uh, you know, but they still got other guys like Spillane, Jack Jones, eh, up and down cornerback. But I think I think the running game for the Chiefs is going to be the driving factor. They're going to throw the ball to Kelsey, and the Chiefs are going to remain undefeated in Allegiant State. They have yet to lose in Allegiant Stadium. Uh, since the since the opening of that stadium, um, and even going into the Super Bowl last year, they did not lose there. So, uh, but I like the Chiefs to win that game uh, rather rather easily, I would say. Now, funny thing though, the Raiders were the last team to beat the Chiefs, but I don't know. All right, Sunday night football action. You got the Dallas Cowboys three and three taking on the uh, depleted uh, from San Francisco 49ers at three and four. 
put it simple. Niners, I know you're depleted, but you're a better coach team. You're a better rant organization. You need to win this game. The Cowboys are a mess. The Cowboys are a mess. The owner's delusional. The players are delusional. The fact that Troy Aikman made his comments, I don't know if some of you are aware, he made a comment about the wide receivers uh, not running really great routes, kind of lazy routes, uh, based on, on the film study he's done for preparation for a lot of their games. Um, and then Robert Turpin, I think, it's, whatever, it's Kevante Turpin says, basically, he don't know what he's talking about. Like, I, I'm going to go with Troy Aikman here on this. So he's uh, seen a lot more football than you. He's a Super Bowl winner, two-time Super Bowl winner, and a Hall of Famer, or three-time Super Bowl winner, excuse me, and a Hall of Famer. So, uh, you know, Cowboys, defense is, is, is not good at all. They don't run the football. Uh, I, at least the Niners can maybe still run the football. Now I know they don't really have a lot of options outside, uh, but but the, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, the the Niners have the blueprint on how to beat the Cowboys. It's obvious. Run the football like most every team does, and, and you're okay. And don't turn the ball over to them. Um, but I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't even know what the spread in on this game. I, I would assume. It's four and a half, so it's under a touchdown. But, you know, the Cowboys, to me, even with a week off of preparation, this isn't a real, a very well-coached team. I, 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 I dare to venture to, to say that they're probably one of the most penalized teams in the National Football League. Um, they are not; they don't play clean football, and I feel bad, but it is what it is. But um, I got the Niners winning this game. Uh, and if they don't, then the Niners are done. If they lose this game to Dallas, season's over. Don't even bother. This is a game you got to – I know they've struggled a little bit with the injuries, but you got to beat this team. You got you got to beat them. All right. And then for Monday night, you got the uh, New York Giants taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Russell Wilson, I believe, is still the starter or should be the starter, and rightfully so. Um, the, the, pan, uh, the Excuse me, the Steelers' defense is legit, obviously. Now they got a quarterback back there who can throw the football, uh, establishing relationship with George Pickens, which we talked about earlier in this episode. Uh, the Giants – I, I thought they were turning the corner. Listen, I did not think they were going to be playoff contenders, but I thought that they were making the right steps in the right direction. Honestly, it's the quarterback really play is, is not great. I think they got talent on this team. I think they're in the market for a quarterback as well, too. Uh, and I think traveling to Pittsburgh is going to fare too much for Daniel Jones. The only thing I will say, if Daniel Jones is still the starting quarterback and they don't switch to Drew Locke, at least he can throw touchdowns on the road, where since signing his mega deal, um, Daniel Jones has yet to throw a touchdown in MetLife Stadium since signing his deal. Yeah, crazy, 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 crazy. So I expect the Steelers to win this game um, and improve their record to uh, six and six and two, uh, and, and try to stay on top of the NFC North and just be right there, uh, step by step, with the uh, Baltimore Ravens who are making some noise there as well too. So okay, all right, there you have it. Those are my uh, previews and predictions for Week Eight. Should be a good week. All right, for my final segment, uh, before we wrap the show, we're going to talk about some fantasy impacts. Now, I'm going to do something slightly different this week uh, instead of looking at the waiver wire because at this point, like the, most waiver wires are pretty pretty scarce at this point, right? So you're going to have to make do with some of the players that you got. So this week, I want to go a little bit different direction and talk about some up and down players. Maybe some guys you have on your team, uh, you may want to make sure you plug in and some guys, maybe you might want to reconsider. So let's start with the quarterbacks up and down here. Uh, Jordan Love, he's definitely up, right? I, I get it, the interceptions early on in games, inconsistency in the beginning, but the guy really picks it up late in the games and he has a very favorable matchup this week, I believe against the Packers. Uh, I mean, excuse me, against the Jaguars. He he plays for the Packers. So he's definitely a guy that I feel like uh he's on the he's on the come up. So if you have him, make sure you got him in this week. It's a favorable matchup. Another guy who we haven't talked about in a while, and that's Tua. Tua um is I think might be a go this week. And I know Miami Dolphins fans are in tears right now, waiting for this guy to go back. Who would have thought Tua would have been the difference in Miami winning and losing? Uh, this season. And he definitely is. So I feel like with him to return or set to return, that's going to only help bolster this offense, especially those two standout wide receivers they have in Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. So the effect of him coming back also raises the level uh, or expectations for those other two guys. Uh, and so I think he's on the come up. Now, the next quarterback who I would have never thought would have said that he's on the come up, and that's Bo Nix. Um, he's starting to play a little bit better. Uh, he's still one of those middle of the road quarterbacks but again if you do have them uh on your bench and you have a quarterback that's maybe on a bye week whatever the case may be i think he's a suitable 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 re re replacement um for this upcoming week um you know the stats say that 
he's starting to play better. And of course, you're playing the Panthers. So if you can't get right against the Panthers, I don't know what else to to, to tell you, really. Um, now, some quarterbacks I'm a little bit down on uh, going into this week is CJ Stroud. Uh, struggled mightily this past weekend against the Packers, only completing 86 yards. So not proving to be very valuable in fantasy for anyone that had him this week. So definitely some guys I, I, I really don't – not to say that I, I don't have confidence in him, um, but I want to see some things get corrected before I continue to maybe play him a little bit more. A uh, guy I'm, I'm still down on, but still he's a great winner, and that's Patrick Mahomes. Like turnovers, we talked about it earlier on the show. Uh, what six touchdowns only uh, only and eight touchdowns uh, that's not good and on top of that he doesn't have anyone really that he can throw the ball through deep that can get you those touchdowns that he's used to uh that we've we've come accustomed to uh so definitely a guy that's down for me and the last quarterback is anthony richardson i think i'm off i'm, I'm off i'm off the anthony richardson train uh i think he is what he is and i i tried to be optimistic about him but deep down in my soul i thought i thought it might work with shane steichen but I just don't think he can play in the National Football League. Um, and and on, on top of that, he's injury prone. So uh, he he's good for a big chunk play here or there. But consistently, um, he's not going to rack up a lot of yards. He's not going to rack up a lot of points for you unless he's making big plays. The only way you really can really use him is if he runs the football. And he's not like a Lamar Jackson. Uh, and on top of that, he can get hurt in the middle of a game. So that's not, that's not something you want <laughs> to happen for you uh while you're playing so all right let's talk about some running backs here um this is the Tua effect uh D devon arshan or archain and raheem mostert i think they're gonna benefit now last week they did try to get the running game going against the Colts. i will give them credit um uh, but it, they still fell short but i believe with mostert coming back from injury as well uh and archain or arshan whatever you want to say his name i think they have to most to they have the most to to be improved upon in regards to fantasy plays. And I think those two guys will be a definitely big pickup for you. If you do have them on your roster, you might want to make sure you start them this week because I feel like two is going to open up the run game by throwing the ball uh, and getting those guys open, which will allow them to open up those running lanes for those two running backs to run free. Because here's the thing about Miami, which you got to understand, it's a track meet. They need space. Um, and so therefore those guys can do that. Uh, with with the passing lanes open because the defense is going to be spread out and that's where you can run best and then when that that's when the Dolphins are at their best at that point. All right, next I like Kareem Hunt of the Kansas City Chiefs. I know once news had broke that he was maybe possibly going back to the Kansas City Chiefs. I know everyone was all over that. So if you're the lucky winner uh, in the Kareem Hunt sweepstakes, you got a good one. His last two games, he's totaled over what 200 yards from the line of scrimmage. Um, he's got 52 touches within the last two games. And you can only expect his 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 role to expand. And they got the Raiders. The Raiders are atrocious on defense. So I think that's a very favorable matchup. I think expect to, to see some really, really good stats for Kareem Hunt moving forward. Uh, staying in the AFC West, Javante Williams, who exploded, exploded on Thursday night uh, against the New Orleans Saints. Pause, uh, where he racked up 111 yards, two touchdowns. Um, and I think he's got an even better matchup this week against the Panthers. Again, another team that's really at the bottom of the bottom in regards to defensive ranking. So I like him there. Rico Dotto, uh, I believe, has emerged as the guy there in Dallas, which doesn't say a lot. It, this is kind of like a very, very risky pick uh, to play because the Cowboys just don't run the football enough. So Rico Dotto doesn't get the volume. Now, he is the number one guy, I think. So there, there is some value in that. So if you're in, if you have him on your bench, or you, you, you know, your other running back options aren't great because there's a buy or maybe the matchup. You know, they are playing the 49ers. Um, they, they, the 49ers have been giving up a lot of running yards in the past couple of weeks. So it's, it's worth a look there, maybe. Um, but I would say he's on the up. A guy that's on the down is Chuba Hubbard. Um, now after starting what a couple of weeks, really, really one of the top running backs in the National Football League as far as you know, scoring-wise is concerned, really has tapered off. Um, the Panthers have just really haven't played really well at all. Um, and I think that's affecting him uh, so far. So I, I would say anywhere clear away from any players on the offensive side of things for the Carolina Panthers, they just haven't really lived up to it. And that's that's including myself. I have Deontay Johnson in one of my fantasy leagues. is hasn't done anything, um, really, for the most part. So I'm starting to look other way uh, look, look the other way in regards to Carolina Panther players. Uh, Alvin Kamara, 
Um, really, he got shut down last week against Denver. Uh, and I don't think I don't think it's going to get any better. I believe they got the Chargers next. Um, so that matchup doesn't look great for him as well because they're one of the best run defenses in the National Football League. So I, I don't expect him to go off. So that's a guy that I'm not really high on. Tony Pollard. Um, he was kind of been in the middle of the pack this year, I will say. Uh, but recently, he's one of the worst running backs in, in fantasy football. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's not a reflection of him as a player. It's just the times aren't really that great, right? So and they don't really have an identity. So I'm really not I'm really not up on him. All right, let's look at some wide receivers. Um, I've already talked about some Miami Dolphins players and and Tua, uh, Raheem Mostert, uh, R. Shane. Now I got to talk about their receivers and Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. I think they're on the up here. They're on the come up. I feel like Tua is definitely is what makes that offense goes, and I think that's he's gonna he's gonna have that same effect for these wide receivers. So definitely, if you have those guys, you might want to start them this week, especially if it's confirmed that Tua is going to play this week. Regardless of how long he's been out, I think he's still gonna be good enough to play uh, and, and be better than what they've had at quarterback in the last couple of weeks. So for sure, um, Jawan Jennings. I think is going to be a guy, I think, with the injury to uh, Brandon Ayuk, um, Debo should be okay moving forward. Uh, but I feel like Jawan Jennings is going to see majority of these targets, especially now from Brock Purdy. Between him and George Kittles, I, I think Jawan Jennings is definitely capable of being uh, like a, a interim 1A, 1B um, type of receiver. So definitely a guy on the come up there. Another wide receiver who I believe is on the come up because of a quarterback play, and that's George Pickens. We all saw the connection that he had uh, with Russell Wilson Sunday night, so there's no doubt in my mind that it's not going to continue. So definitely you're going to see his product productivity uh, ramp up here in the next couple of weeks, I think, uh, if, if, if he's trending in the right direction, which I believe he is. So I like George Pickens to, to, to improve his productivity. Romeo Dobbs um, had a really great game uh, last week against um, the Texans. One thing about the, the the Packers receivers, though, is that it's kind of like a carousel, like a revolving door. One week it's one guy, one week it's this guy. But I think Dobbs, although he, he maybe it doesn't always finish the game with the most yards or most receptions, but I do know for a fact he's heavily targeted. So see, um, Jordan Love does favor him. Uh, so that's one thing to be very optimistic about. If you do own him uh, or if you don't own him, go get him. Uh, because although he may not finish the number one, He's going to get the ball thrown to him a lot more than some of the other guys like that, like Wicks or even Watson or even their their their, their standout tight end in, uh, and Taylor Kraft here. So I like him. Cedric Tillman with the departure of Amari Cooper um, uh, from the from the Cleveland Browns to the Buffalo Bills, and then Jerry Judy just really not being good at all this year. I think Cedric Tillman is going to look very 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 good. Uh, if you do can go get him, I think he is available on a majority of uh, fantasy uh, football waiver wires. Go get him. I think James Wilson should be the starter this week going into their week. Um, maybe not DTR. I don't know. But even so, Cedric Tillman should see a, a numerous amounts of targets this week in a Cleveland Browns jersey. Now, Malik Neighbors looked good before the concussion. Daniel Jones since then has sucked. I don't know. This could flip. Maybe. Malik Neighbors makes Daniel Jones look better, but right now I'm not sold on Malik Neighbors right now. Not because of his talent, it's because he's dependent on Daniel Jones, who really hasn't really played good football. Another guy that's on the downturn because of just quarterback playing team overall, and and more particularly, it's the matchup. Is that's Deontay Johnson and the Carolina Panthers? So they're playing the Denver Broncos, and that defense is you saw what they've what they've been doing. So do I need to see anything else? And if Patrick Sertain Jr. returns this week, um, that's not a favorable matchup for Deontay Johnson. So I'm very down on him. Um, and then the final guy is uh, Josh Downs. Uh, again, it's quarterback play. Anthony Richardson, to me, is not a great fantasy football quarterback, uh, and, and, and that doesn't help any receivers um, that he's throwing to. So Josh Downs for me for the Colts. Not averaging enough for me to keep him in play anywhere. And I feel like his stock is going to be kind of on the downturn as well. So, all right. Tight ends, a uh, short list here. Um, David Njoku, I think, is going to increase his productivity. With like, like I said before, Amari Cooper's gone. Cedric Tillman's a, more of a young wide receiver upcoming, right? Uh, Jerry Judy not playing well. So I think David Njoku should see a lot more volume as well for him. Uh, Hunter Henry, him and Drake May looking pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. So uh, Drake May is moving the ball down the field. He's attempting to throw the ball down the field. And Hunter Henry is one of those vertical type tight ends. So I can see him doing well. Uh, down My down tight end, Sam Laporta. Um, 
I, I, I don't know. I, I think right now they're they're and this could change, right? With Jamison Williams, Jamison Williams being suspended for the next two games, that might be on the uptake there. But Sam Laporta, he may get you a touchdown, but overall product productivity. Uh, he's not one of the top tight ends in fantasy, which is which is concerning to me, although he does have the talent to be. And every now and then he does show that. But from a fantasy perspective, I'm not really liking him as well. Uh, and, and so he's on the downturn for me. So there you have it. Those are my fantasy impacts for this week going into week eight. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Take that information, use it, go maybe play around with your uh, with your with your lineups or maybe go into the waiver wire and get some guys. So So there you have it. All right, there you have it. That concludes this episode of NFL Matchups. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure, like, and comment, man. I really appreciate it. And subscribe to the Grid Network as well as my YouTube channel at Clutch Sports Talk Podcast. Uh, be on the lookout for me live this Sunday morning as I do my NFL Sunday wake-up show, getting you guys locked and loaded uh, prior to all of the games starting. We'll, and we'll, we'll kind of recap some news or anything's going around the National Football League you guys don't want to miss out. So until next time, like I always say, this is Ryan Flowers, a.k.a. Clutch Sports Talk. Never settle till the work is done. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.